club in England to be able to uh, to finish middle of the table when you look at the likes of of the Chelsea's, the Arsenal's, Man United, the Liverpool's, uh, you know, the money that they have to spend. It's not even close. And you're looking at Joe Gallardo, just 19 years old, U.S. Youth National Team forward, uh, beginning play for OCB. Uh, Rochester hoping to clear here. OCB with the initial possession. You, know, you talked about that rain falling down. Uh, previous uh, to kick off tonight it does look like it's slowed it's expected to to linger around most of the night it's perfect on field turf it'll make it play more true that ball will really skip along the surface instead of getting caught up in it the keepers might not like it so much because of the way that ball is going to zip off the surface but the players uh, out in the field of play are going to love a, a little bit of uh, you know uh, precipitation on the pitch before kickoff and who does that speed favor Lee which team do you think Ah, well, Rochester at home, you know, they do like to attack. When we talked to, to Bob Lilly uh, yesterday uh, about uh, his team and, and, and what they do like to do, and uh, it certainly is uh, one of their, uh, you know, uh, tactics going into this game is to attack. Uh, you know, they don't want to, to uh, you know, take any chances where they're going to make mistakes and give up goals. They've been very good defensively uh, this season, but goal scoring at times have been problem. Uh, problems for them uh, but they have done very well since uh, uh, well they haven't lost a game since they were uh, thrashed 4-0 to Charleston recovered very good uh, from that and and now see them working their way uh, up that table they have uh, you know they play this is their 12th game of the season the Rowdies have already played 16 games so and they're only a couple points back of them uh, so those games in hand are going to prove to be very crucial OCB on the attack but Gomez will handle that easily. These two teams drew a 1-1 tie back in Orlando on June 7th. Haji Berry and Antonio Correa uh, with the goals. OCB leads the all-time series 1-0-2. Now, Rochester, you talk about their attack. They've scored only one goal in each of the last six matches, all by a different player, though. So what a balanced scoring attack, and they're unbeaten in that stretch. And there's the cross, uh, almost... A terrific opportunity here just in the third minute of play as Rochester pressuring uh, OCB and Earl Edwards Jr. There's a good look at Earl. Yeah, good cross through the box there and fortunate for Orlando City that no one was making that run into the middle. But uh, you are right, Ari. They, they do spread out the scoring. They don't need to rely on one. They would like to get some more goals right now, but uh, multiple players with more than two goals uh, on the team uh, for this Rhino side. And as long as you keep getting the points, uh, winning your games at home and, and trying to, to steal points on the road, you're going to find yourself in the top, uh, very top of the Eastern Conference standings. And Coach Lilly, he loves the leadership and play of Canardo Forbes, who has three assists. 18 chances created. He says he makes everyone around him better. Yeah, he's such a versatile player, and he really is a general in the midfield and brings a lot of confidence to the rest of the team uh, around him, makes everybody better. He said he might not be scoring the goals, but he's got such confidence on the ball that, and he knows uh, where to be, the right place, the right time, and he's got that vision to help set up uh, other players and really do well uh, for Rochester in transition. Now you're looking at number 47, Jules, just 18 years old. This is a young lineup that Coach Poulos has put on the field. Here come the Rhinos. They try to attack the middle of the field on the attack, Turgu. Beautiful pass, edge of the box. A header is just deflected out of the box off of Turgu. But a nice attack there for the Rhinos. Yeah, that's very unfortunate for Rochester. You saw Jordan Dover coming in, and that one was headed and couldn't get over top of it. And if that one would have just been left alone, Jordan Dover put his arms up. He was coming in to get that one, but he wasn't seen coming in from behind. Let's take another look at this, what I'm talking about. It's Madison with that cross, and there you see that header, but there you see D Jordan Dover just coming into your screen. That would have came down perfectly for him. Yeah, to no way Turgu could see Dover darting in from behind him, though. Well, that's where communication uh, comes into play, Ellie. It, it certainly does. Now, the Rhinos battling against this young team that Coach Poulos has uh, assembled for this match. 
You see a bunch of uh, under 20 year olds uh, led by Pierre De Silva, number 98. Uh, he has five assists to lead OCB, just 18 years old. Yeah, he's really good on that uh, left-hand side. 12 appearances, 11 starts, and it's that service that he brings along that left-hand side. Someone certainly, uh, the big squad in Orlando City in Major League Soccer uh, will be looking at his development very closely here with OCB. Yeah, he's the first player in club history to climb from Development Academy to OCB to first team. He's second in the USL with five assists he is De Silva. And here's a free kick upcoming for DeFreger out of New Hampshire. Played at Dartmouth, won an Ivy League championship there. Puts it in the box, and the shot is deflected off of Turgu. And battle for and cleared by OCB. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. And there's one of the youngsters, a Jules at 18. De Silva at 18, Gallardo at 19, Dequa at 19, Lee. Yeah, and I think you're already starting to see the experience uh, of the Rhinos coming through early in this game. That was another great opportunity of that free kick by DeFreger, and it did fall for Turgu in the box. I don't think he was expecting it to sit the way he it, that it did, and he wasn't able to turn and get a shot away, but some uh, early opportunities just one touch away, I think, from Rochester to having really good look at goal. Yeah, you have many jewels. Takes that away. There's Gallardo. As OCB tries to clear to no avail. Here's Wall Fall starting the attack. Ends up on the leg of Ryan James. The reverse field. Nice little collision there with DeFreger. Perimeter is Dover darting in between two defenders. Gets knocked down. The Rhino send it in. Almost a clear opportunity. Just a little bit behind that lead pass. Yeah, difficult to see there. Darius Madison was open up top. Uh, we couldn't see the top of your screen there, whether or not the flag came up uh, or not. He did appear to, to look like he thinks the flag did go up, but he thinks he was onside. Yeah, he was probably a few feet yeah. offside. He was mad at himself that he couldn't hold the line. Yeah, that's why he pulled up there. Here come the Rhinos again, Garzi. Near side, they bring it Madison, a playmaker, Darius. Leaves for Turgu, the cross, and Edwards Jr. able to seize it, but another opportunity. It's been all Rhinos early on. Yeah, it certainly has. There is a lot of space out there for the men in green tonight. Uh, the young players and that inexperience, a, a very different lineup from night to night for OCB. Difficult for Anthony Poulos to get consistency and the Rhinos taking advantage of it. Orlando City need to close down better, be better off the ball. Don't give the Rhinos this much time and space or it could end up being a very long night. Yeah, Gomez with that huge leg. Five clean sheets already this year. The 2016 USL Golden Glove. Lowest goals against average at .69 last season. Uh, for Gomez, now take a look at this replay. Turgu, beautiful pass. Yeah, he just slots it right along the ground, and unfortunately there you saw DeFrager in on the action, but no one could just uh, get a boot on it. Very dangerous as well, uh, trying to clear those balls. Uh, he was almost looking for Turgu, a deflection and possibly even an own goal. We've seen that numerous occasions this year, just that hard driven ball into the six yard box, and you never know what's gonna happen. Now getting back to uh, uh, Gomez, who holds the Georgetown school record with 36 shutouts. You know, we talked about him with Coach a little bit in the conference um, earlier this weekly, and uh, Coach Lilly, he said, you know, Gomez, despite his five clean sheets, he wants more out of him. He so sounds like an old uh, professional coach uh, with with his leadership, Coach Lilly. He, yeah, he knows uh, the, the right times to say the right things. He doesn't want to come out and, and have his uh, keeper be too overconfident. He still says he's playing well, but he thinks he could be better to get back to that form like he was at the end of last season, uh, that there's been some ups and downs. But he said, yeah, since that Charleston game, though, he's been very consistent. And that's 
not just Tomas Gomez. That's the entire back line and the team working together defensively as a unit. OCB with Jules. Keeps it in bounds. Chips it into the corner. Very nicely done. OCB trying to mount an attack with Danny Deke in there out of the University of South Carolina. Five shots, three on target this season. 18 goals in 41 games with the Gamecocks. And Deacon at 23, one of the elder statesmen on this, this group for OCB. Yeah, Deacon out of Sheffield, England, who was with the Sheffield United Academy product, uh, played last season with Detroit City FC, the NPSL, with one goal and two assists in nine appearances, comes over to Orlando City B. Garzi, beautiful. Execution here by Coach Lilly's troops. And Dover in his rookie season finds Turgu. Madison had lost his footing in the middle of the box. And Jordan Dover will inbound. Yeah, the Canadian Jordan Dover out of Ajax, Ontario, just northeast of Toronto. He won a U18 national championship with the Ajax Strikers. So the Right back and left back for Rochester tonight, both Canadians, is Ryan James, also from the greater Toronto area just outside. And Mississauga was a TFC Academy player. And then he made 28 appearances uh, last year as a rookie, one goal and two assists. And spoken by a proud Canadian to my right. You got to give him props Lee where it's Godfrey. due. There's not too, <laughs> too many of them out there, so it's nice that they're uh, getting opportunities here. And also nice that. In the USL and the NASL, they're not considered international players. They take up a domestic spot. And in Major League Soccer, that's a, a big issue with a lot of people out there that in Major League Soccer on American teams, Canadians take up an international slot, so it doesn't give them as much opportunity. If you come through an academy uh, program now, they don't take uh, in as an international in Major League Soccer, but great that the USL doesn't uh, punish teams for them being Canadian. In a North American league where you have teams in Canada and in the US, they should all have a level playing field. So that's great to see that they'll get those opportunities in the United Soccer League. And uh, Jordan Dover, uh, they, Coach Lilly couldn't be more pleased with his production as a rookie. He calls him a great athlete, smart kid, very proactive. Uh, 26 interceptions, 39 duels won, eight chances created uh, by Dover, who did attend uh, University of Wisconsin Green Bay coming out of Canada. Wall Fall, their leader from Frankfurt, Germany. Deacon, taken away by Ryan James, who's won 50 duels this season, 33 interceptions. Another Canadian. Here comes Dover on the push. On the attack to the middle of the field. Rhino's controlling tempo, fall. Passes on in, trying to track it down was Forbes. Let him a little bit too much. Yeah, just a little over the top, but you really see Orlando City B bunching up defensively. There must have been a line of seven or eight in white at the top of the box there, and that's where you're just going to try that little over-the-top ball that Rochester had tried to get to Cornardo Forbes. They are really falling back, playing a, a line uh, that's a very deep in their own zone defensively and just giving Rochester so much space up there. And really, uh, I only see right now uh, a couple of opportunities on giveaways and, and on the counter attack and, and no one else moving forward for Orlando City B. So a bit of a j disjointed start uh, for the club tonight. Uh, uh, you know, fatigue starts to set in as well. They're probably uh, wanting to, to get home after this uh, three game road trip. But yeah. uh, certainly uh, I do think that uh, Anthony Poulos uh, will be uh, upset with the, the play of their young side in 15 minutes of play. He's going to want to see a little bit more tonight out of them. Timbo sends it in and in the air. That will go on OCB is sent to the turf as Joe Farrell. Who has won 46 duels. He has played all 990 minutes this season. Joe Farrell, their Iron Man, nominated for rookie of the year last season in the in the USL. Who was the Rhinos defensive player of the year and uh, all USL second team. 
And one of the most impressive stats is that he scored five goals out of the back and 11 points. He was third in team scoring as a defender. So you know, it brings a lot from the big man that can come forward and get in on set pieces. Great play by Ryan James there. But OCB comes away with it, uh, led by Timbo. Back the other way on the counter. And that pass unable to connect with the darting Dover. Rochester continues to dominate possession and pressure. Wall fall, leading the attack to the perimeter. It's Turgu, has got an 83% passing efficiency. And nobody there on the far side. Forbes comes into the picture. And kept in by Farrell. Now Joe with one goal thus far this season out of LaSalle University. Deacon trying to get something started for OCB. Yeah, and this is where Rochester have to be careful with dominating uh, the run of play so far. It's that one chance where OCB comes up the field and, and has an opportunity. And look at that, just like that, they haven't seen much inside uh, the defensive zone of Rochester. And there was a collision there, a free kick. And lucky that one happened just outside the box, Ari. Uh, there you see it there. And a big collision as Dover just stands up straight and knocks into De Silva. Yeah, De Silva and, and a pigeon uh, were sent to the turf on that takedown by Dover. And it's a free kick and a good opportunity here for Orlando City uh, B to, to get on the board here from a set piece. Here, De Silva very dangerous, a goal, five assists, which ranks him second in the USL. And this is actually going to be taken, it appears, by Gallardo. Now they're both over the ball, and but it does appear it's going to be the right footer of Gallardo. So Gallardo just out of the corner of the box here. In the 18th minute, OCB looks to take the lead and cleared out momentarily. De Silva, beautiful move into the box. With the left foot, the cross, and the goal! Outstanding play. Sixth assist, Lee, and he found Timbo, the 27-year-old defender who turned pro at the age of 16 in Brazil. Now here's another look to Silva on that left-hand side, and he darts to the line. A beautiful cut and move there. Slides it across, and it's Timbo wide open there and he's able to get OCB on the board first but it was the great move by De Silva uh, cutting along the end line and into the box a perfect pass and Timbo gets on to the end of that one so uh, after uh, playing defensively most of this first half so far and really falling back they get one free kick opportunity are able to do something after that free kick and get on the board in their first real offensive opportunity of the game. You called it, Lee. You said that Rochester has to be cautious here. Timbo's first goal of the season, Pierre De Silva. Wow, was he impressive. Now we see his ability to set things up for OCB, his sixth assist of the season. Yeah, and that'll be something that'll have Bob Lilly pulling his hair out that you've done so well and created those chances and then you switch off defensively for a moment because you really haven't had to defend. Uh, so uh, mentally they need to react well. Rochester just keep playing uh, how they've been playing in this first half. Stick to the game plan and if you do continue to play this way of course you can allow those opportunities uh, on the counter attack and, those, and give up fouls in bad places because teams will take advantage of that. Uh, keep playing the way that you're playing and what has allowed you to go eight unbeaten this season. So De Silva, sixth assist, just 18 years old. Uh, you're going to be seeing him uh, for many years to come. There's Turgu, lifts it, and just over the head of Darius Madison, who is looking and hoping for his third goal of the season. Yeah, Turgu's 
Got to do better there on the service along that left-hand side. That's the second ball that he's floated uh, well over top. He needs to get that driven more, a little bit low, something that Darius Madison can get on the end on. And if he doesn't, you need to have Jordan Dover making that overlapping run uh, along that back post. Yeah, collision there involved with Farrell. So OCB possession, free kick up coming up one to nothing here in the 21st minute. A startling turnaround after a free kick and then all set up by De Silva to Timbo has OCB up one to nothing. The Rochester Rhinos visit the official online store. Rhinos Cares Charity Night here presented by Sun Common. $5 from every ticket goes towards ensuring underprivileged children, military personnel, and first responders to ensure that they are able to attend Rhinos game. What a program set up by the charities and many charities are here tonight at Capelli Sports Stadium. Here comes Dover. The cross headed away by Jules, Yomani Jules. And that in the air, Madison battling with Edwards Jr. And it will go against Darius. Yes, also, Charles Murphy having the referee having a chat with Darius Madison right now, giving him a warning as you see him go in hard here as Edwards Jr. comes out to punch that one away. And giving him a warning now to make sure you win that ball. So that sixth assist by De Silva ties him for the league lead in the USL. Well, Rochester fans, not only is it charity night here tonight, but uh, the next home match, which is July 8th, uh, versus the Harrisburg City Islanders is Capelli Sport Hero Cup. That's a home and home series to help support Rochester and Harrisburg veteran foundations. So come on out on the 8th to uh, help all the uh, veterans groups and foundations. Well, we see now a corner kick for Orlando City B. So. So far tonight, Rochester has been the better team, but Orlando City B has had the better chances. This is their first corner of the night. Rochester without one yet. Rochester uh, not with a, a free kick and a good opportunity. So the two most dangerous opportunities in this first half are going to Orlando City B. They were able to get something out of the first one. And will they be able to get something out of this corner kick opportunity as well here in the 23rd minute? Yeah, De Silva. Looking for his second assist, goes to the far post. The header twice is collected and cleared by the Rhinos. Uh, De Silva, such an accurate foot. Here's Gallardo, beautiful cross, the shot. Beautiful crossover move by Gallardo. De Silva trying to run it down with Dover. Uh, you can see the talent of these young kids for O.C. Bealey. Oh, you certainly can, and Rochester have to be much more aware defensively. Gallardo cutting into the box there, and fortunate is Rochester that that didn't take a deflection or at least uh, hit the other OCB player that was standing there in the six-yard box, or this could be easily 2-0 right now. now. Let's take a look at this move by Gallardo. Yeah, it's streaking into the box, and he turns. He doesn't get all of it. And there you see right there, couldn't quite tell who that was on OCB, but very fortunate because he was left unmarked. And uh, right now, you know, Tomas Gomez has got to be yelling at his players, uh, you guys have to be better at the back right now. Uh, very suspect, and it could have cost Rochester right now to be down 2-0, uh, even though uh, they've had the real run of play in this first half. And OCB, since that goal though, they have certainly seized the momentum. Uh, it seemed to really energize this young group, gave him a ton of confidence, Lee. 
Yeah, after the initial, you, you always say you have to weather that storm from the home club, and it and it looks like they did that fine. They they were able to defend uh, the multiple opportunities by Rochester, and now they've uh, found their way into this game. This one has settled down a little bit now, and you know found its form. And uh, you know as you're right, as it's been going on. Uh, OCB have been able to, to get up that field a little bit more and, and start to get something going offensively. Here's Forbes trying to get something started for the Rhinos. Mike Garzi, the eight-match unbeaten run on the line here tonight for Rochester. The crowd limited a little bit by, by rain in the area. It was raining in pregame. But the USL has averaged more than 6,000 fans per game last week for the first time in league history. They have 18 sellout crowds for the season here in the USL to see this terrific brand of soccer. And that ball way up in the air. Players had to wait and wait for that to come down. A little pushing from behind, no whistle. Nice touch pass to fall from Forbes. And there's a, a whistle sent to the turf with Wall Fall as he got mixed up with Gallardo. Yeah, that's why that pass uh, out to that left-hand flank was just a, a little bit too far forward. Fall being taken down from behind. And so the free kick given. And uh, once again, I don't think even 10 yards was given there. So the referee, Charles Murphy, has backed it up again. Ball finds Ryan Felix, a 6-4 player out of Loyola Marymount, USL Team of the Week last week. After scoring his first career goal, it was a game winner versus Ottawa. Forbes is smooth and sent that uh, just got underneath it a little bit. Fans stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XMFC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Merle Edwards Jr. tied for second in the USL with 36 saves. He has three shutouts this season and a member of the USL team of the week in week five here's Forbes so crafty so composed out there Lee well he'll run everything runs through him and they know it and he's just waiting now to see where some space can open up and this is the part where Rochester been good and dominating possession. They just need to be able to break through uh, that final line of OCB and that one just a little bit too far forward. And uh, Orlando City B seems, you know, complacent in being able to sit back and, and you know what, say, bring what you have at us, we'll defend it, and then we'll go for something on the counter attack. And they've been successful with that so far tonight. Uh, wall fall, you saw the length of fall, 6-3 has helped him to win 23 tackles, 76 draws this season, 23 interceptions. He does it all, three goals and an assist. Here's Fall. A precarious pass through the defense, intercepted and dragged down from behind, and the whistle does come in as uh, DeFreger got all jersey on uh, De Silva. Yeah, and that's just a foul that he doesn't have to make there because he's in the book now. I don't think there was too much danger. Yes, OCB was on the counterattack, but I think that the men in green had men in numbers in behind to defend, and that's just a, a, a lazy foul and an obvious uh, yellow card for DeFrega right here once and twice. And finally, De Silva goes down and DeFrega goes in the book. Danny Deacon. Chips it in, out of the air, cleared. Wall, beautiful touch pass. And just unable to keep it in bounds. Uh, the Rhinos there. In the 30th minute, 
OCB trying to snap their two-game skid. Yeah, and OCB going into the night uh, in 11th spot in the East, so they could quickly jump back up into that top eight in a, in a playoff position uh, if they can get a result in Rochester tonight. Ryan Felix to the other Ryan, Ryan James. And Farrell, the anchor of the defense. Beautiful lead pass to the perimeter. Here comes Dover. Dover surveying. Nice move to the perimeter by uh, DeFreger, but was denied. Denied, but the Rhinos are in their first corner kick of the match. We'll see how OCB will be able to defend this one. I've been happier with the way that Orlando City B seems to be playing. They were playing a higher line, pushing more bodies forward, and, and it was that nice pass up that left-hand flank to earn this corner kick. DeFreger, the corner, puts it high in the air, running under it to keep it in bounds on the far side is Forbes. Working with James. The cross goes directly to Edwards Jr. off the left foot of Ryan James. We did have the opportunity to see some of the fan groups here at Capelli Sports Stadium. A couple of the best, Oak Street Brigade and Flower City Stampede. Uh, battling the drizzle throughout the evening. Now Rochester will be disappointed and Bob Lilly will dis be disappointed in that corner kick. Uh, opportunity by the Rhinos just floated well over top of everyone. And then when James got it at the end, he just, you know, whiffed it in right on Earl Edwards Jr. No problem there for him. Uh, Timbo wrestling with DeFreger. Fall, nice move to his right, reverses, gets a shot off, but blocked at the defense. Wall Fall demonstrating some of his highlight film skills. A great turn there and shows that he's got a left foot as well. And unfortunately, his own player blocked that shot. I believe it was Darius Madison standing there and, and just got in the way of it. Yeah, look at that move by Fall. It finds Turgu as a sliding tackle. Chipped into the side of the box. Garzi headed away. Beautiful play by Seb Hines. A week eight, team of the week USL player out of England. He made 23 MLS appearances for Orlando City in 2015. Scored a goal, but it was his defensive play there that might have saved a goal. A good ball into the box, driven in with power. And there was a man in green right behind Seb Hines waiting to punch that one in. So good play there. Yeah, nice play by Dequa. But turned back by the Rhinos. Dover the cross, again a sliding play, very nicely done. Uh, this time it was Connor Donovan, a 21-year-old defender, another youngster, 6'2", 175, uh, part of the U.S. under 17 and under 20 teams. Now you can see there how much Jordan Dover, though, gets forward on that left flank and gets involved offensively. It was him again. That got forward in that ball. Yes, it was blocked out, but it was Rochester on the offense as a defender getting involved in the play uh, as Albert Dequa is down just on top of the six yard box. And Dequa able to get to his feet. The USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's top talent and rising stars. Stay up to date with all the latest league news and information by visiting WWW, here's the corner by Forbes, sent in, in the air, and out of bounds, nicely defended by OCB. But a beautiful corner sent in by Canaro Forbes. Yeah, and this time, Rochester getting on the end of that one, but just running out of time and space, not able to get up and over top of this ball. Watch this one come down. And it did look like it was Wallfall getting involved in that play, but he's hit it with the top of his head, unable to get over top of that one and drive it down into Earl Edwards and make it difficult for him. To stay up to date with all the latest league news and information 
Visit www.uslsoccer.com. Adams on the just couldn't get a full piece of that one on the strike with the left foot in between defenders precariously as Edwards tried to clear uh, the Rhinos countered quickly. Yeah, giveaway there and Darius Madison gets on the end of it and fortunate for OCB that uh, that one wasn't on goal. It looked like it got caught up a little bit in the feet of Darius Madison. Again, you can visit www.uslsoccer.com and follow them on Twitter at USL. So Madison barking at the officials again. A former Cavalier won a championship, a college cup, national championship at the University of Virginia, made the college cup all tournament team. Has been a solid player here in Rochester. Yeah, you can see Rochester getting a little annoyed there that there was no ball on the field. And finally, when one came, two came, which delayed it a little bit longer. But here we go in the 36th minute of play is Rochester eager to try to equalize here. They've had their opportunities, just, uh, you know, not that clinical uh, in the area to be able to uh, finish on those chances they've had and uh, on the chance that Orlando City B, they, they're really one of two chances they've had. They put that in the back of the goal. And Wall Fall trying to elude a couple of defenders. OCB, not many offensive opportunities tonight, but they have made them count, including the lone goal here this evening by that man right there, Timbo, set up by Da Silva. And this is Paul Klaus, the Brit who attended Clemson. And the cross booted away and out of bounds by Farrell. Yeah, and that had to be there. That was a nice step up there and moved by you many jewels and sent that one into the box and cleared away. And yet again, Orlando City B with another corner kick opportunity here, looking to extend that lead. And they go again with Gallardo, the 19-year-old U.S. Youth National Team forward. Or will it be Pierre De Silva who moved into a tie for first in the league with his sixth assist tonight? Here's another one put to the far post and this time grabbed by Tomas Gomez. Look for a quick release as he finds fall. Gomez taking no chances there, Lee. He got up there in the air to seize a hold of that one. Yeah, it looked like De Silva. I don't know if he was looking for any players there, if he was just trying to bend that one in and find the, the back side netting on his own and actually go for a goal uh, on the corner kick with his left foot in swinger. He has one goal this season to go along with now six assists. A collision there, and then the late whistle comes. Garzi and Seb Hines. Uh, Seb sent to the turf, 6'2", 170 pounder. Terrific athlete out of England. Uh, looks like he may have had the wind knocked out of him, but certainly a, a big size difference there on the challenge. And it looked like Seb Hines just went in very hard and ended up uh, getting the worst of it. I, I almost thought that it could have been a 50-50 ball and the referee could have allowed play to continue. And that doesn't tickle when you <laughs> hit the ground that hard on that on that field turf. It still does. If you get it the wrong way, it still really does uh, burn a little bit like old AstroTurf uh, it did in, on baseball and, and NFL fields and even in the old days of the uh, original North American Soccer League playing on that flat carpet. Yeah, he was sent to the turf by Mark Garzi. You talked about a size disadvantage. Garzi 5'7", 140, and that just can't connect with DeFregger as Forbes trying to set up Stefan, the Ivy, former Ivy Leaguer. But uh, Mike Garzi, he is a tough customer in his fourth season with the Rhinos. 
Over 2,100 minutes played last season. He's created 10 chances this season with a couple of goals and an assist. Edwards Jr. in the air. Garzi, he took a hit that time. Trying to break out of the pack, but a whistle and stopping the action. Darius Madison was hoping for a breakaway. Yeah, and Darius Madison on that ball headed forward to him. Just anticipated that a little bit too fast, and the offside flag comes up. Oak Street Brigade, Flower City Stampede trying to get the crowd fired up here. It was a quick start for Rochester, but they were unable to knock one into the back of the net. And then OCB on their first opportunity take, took the lead earlier in the half. The goal by Timbo set up by De Silva. Ryan James back to DeFreger. DeFreger tried to chip it into the corner back to James. Now this man has been tough here on the right side. Yomani Jules. Just 18 years old. Ian De Silva, a couple 18-year-old stars. Forbes. Ooh. Well, he had the right idea there. They were just trying to go for the quick one-two. Put it into the top of the box and give it right back to him. But the, the, the two of the one-two was a little bit too far forward for any Rochester player to catch up to. The right idea... Uh, for the Rhinos here in the first half, they've had a lot of right ideas in this first half, but it just hasn't been uh, enough quality in, in that last uh, touch of the ball or on that final third to, to really test Earl Edwards here. Yeah, again, Edwards, 38 saves coming into the action, second in the USL. 72% save percentage. And 1.25 goals against average. Three shutouts for Edwards Jr., Fall and Forbes, they rely heavily on these two players. They give it away, Dequa sends it to the center of the field. Here comes OCB. That will curl in, run down by Dequa. His pass deflected by Farrell and a shot, hit the crossbar and nearly went in Lee. That is unbelievable, what a strike there and you can see Tomas Gomez Beside himself, upset with the defending. Some really bad defending there. And OCB almost takes advantage of it. One heck of a strike. And that goes off the crossbar. And very lucky this is not 2-0. And they win the corner kick. So towards the end of this first half, Orlando City B with more great scoring chances. Now let's take a look at this. And Ricochets almost went in. Dequa, what a shot. And so fortunate is Rochester on that one. Yeah, it just, if that's anything more underneath the bar, that goes uh, in, it definitely bounces in, goes off that back post or side netting, so just grazes enough of that to stay out. Farrell, so strong in the air with his size. Now they needed that good clearance because the defending has been a suspect on on what really hasn't been a heck of a lot of Orlando City B pressure, but when they have had it, they have made the most of their opportunities uh, so far, and they've been able to do with their little opportunities in this first half what Rochester has not been able to do, and that's been get something on goal to be able to test the keeper, as so far they've had two balls past Gomez. Fortunately uh, for Rochester, one of those got past him but hit the woodwork. Now, Rochester, uh, they seemed so stunned after that first goal. They had dominated play late. And since then, you, you feel like OCB has gained so much confidence. And the Rhinos don't look quite as comfortable out there. Another opportunity here with the left foot is wide of the netting. That one sent in by Gallardo. Yeah, Rochester on the defensive end. Uh, giving Orlando City way too much space and you saw a perfect example of it there as you see look at all that space for uh, Joe Gallardo to be able to 
put his head up and see that he's got room, he's got space to try to uh, get one at target. And unfortunately for him, he gets a little bit underneath that and, and it goes just wide near post. And Tomas Gomez saw it coming. He was well positioned though to be there for the save. So no stoppage time, so only about 15 seconds remain here in the first stanza. Let's see if a team can get an attack. Here comes Forbes with nine seconds. Canardo tripped up, so they will stop a free kick, but Canardo Forbes on the attack. Yeah, and we say no extra time added on here, but because of that foul, the referee is going to allow this to happen, so this will probably be the last play uh, of this first half. Uh, I would almost take the gamble and wouldn't mind seeing Tomas Gomez uh, come up, the goalkeeper for Rochester, and get involved in this play, get another man into the box. We see Timbo getting uh, the yellow card for uh, the action going along, is scrumming uh, along the top of the 18-yard box uh, there. Uh, why not uh, get another body up there because more than likely the whistle is going to blow if Rochester cannot get this one in the back of the net. Yeah, Timbo's a big dude, 6'3", 185, has a goal here tonight. OCB, they're still wrestling. They have the second most yellow cards in the USL. OCB does. Canardo Forbes, so savvy. Let's see what he decides to do. Two goals, three assists on the season. Yeah, we are ready as the whistle blows. Forbes chips it in, headed out towards the side of the box and cleared, and this should end the first half. We also have a player down. Let's hope everybody's okay as a collision in the air. Farrell checking his forehead, and an OCB player down as both will be attended to immediately by the training crew. Yeah, it's the... It's the end of the first half, so the referee's blown the whistle and motioned right away for the, the coaching staff to get out there and have a look. It looks like it's Dequa uh, down for OCB and Farrell for the Rhinos, but Farrell seems to be up and on his feet, and it looks like Albert Dequa is uh, sitting up in a position now, but uh, certainly uh, an interesting half of play. A little bit of action on both sides of this one and Orlando City B coming away uh, with the big goal after a free kick uh, uh, to lead this one. Yeah, both players on their feet. Good to see Dequa has been down a couple of times, a 19-year-old from Cameroon and uh, Joe Farrell. It's tough to get him out of a game. He's played all 990 minutes this season, so I'm sure Joe will be okay as uh, Rochester will try to regroup at the half. It looks like they're going to I thought it was the end of the half. I thought he blew the yeah. whistle three times, but he's just going to have a drop ball here uh, instead and uh, more than likely just blow the whistle right away yet and end this first half of play. And that will end the first half. OCB with the lone goal. Timbo turned pro at the age of 16. The Brazilian, his first goal of the season. There he is. Also picked up a yellow card late in the first half, assisted by Pierre De Silva, his sixth of the season. It puts him tied for first in the league with that, those six assists. We'll see if the Rhinos can keep their unbeaten streak alive. They trail it one to nothing. They were more quality and finished on them and were much more threatening in that final third despite not having that possession or shot. So uh, Orlando City B, you know, I go with the same thing, continue more and, and hope to be able to be as good defensively as you were in that first half and not give up anything inside that 18-yard box. Well, we talked about the youth of OCB up front, but uh, two defenders uh, kind of overlooked. We, Timbo with the goal, he's 27. He, along with Seb Hines, who's 29. Those two experienced in the back for Coach Poulos have come up big here uh, tonight. Yeah, Timbo last year played with the Ottawa Fury, 19 appearances for that side and with the Austin Aztecs before that and uh, trying to get another opportunity here and some minutes with OCB. DeFregger, a great effort to try to keep that pass from fall inbounds. Uh, send it back 
in play for the Rhinos. The start of the second half. Earl Edwards Jr. OB, OCB hoping for this road victory. It'd be a big win in Rochester if they can hang on to this lead just to start of the second half. So what do you think Coach Lilly also uh, said to his team at, during the break, Lee? Well, I, I think beyond what I already discussed is that to, just to stay doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think you have to go up with the same game plan. I, I don't think they did anything wrong. Uh, they were on the wrong end of the scoreboard, certainly, in that first half. But it, it, like I said, uh, you know, go up with that game plan, and, and you got to keep playing the way that you are and have confidence that y you have been that successful uh, at home here and with, you know, the confidence that you, uh, you know, get during an eight-game unbeaten streak and know how you can play, that there's still a lot of time left in this game. I think that's the big thing that you got to put through here is that the scoreboard might not necessarily reflect uh, the game in that first half. And, and that's how away teams go into it a lot. Sit back, sit back, wait for something on the counterattack and grind out a result. And that's not uncommon that you know you're going to lose that possession game uh, as the away team. So, uh, you know, that's where uh, Rochester have to finish on their chances. Yeah, Rochester had a big advantage in possession, over 61% for the Rhinos in the first half as Dover was caught from behind. Uh, Rhinos possession with wall fall. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. Uh, we have an injured player being attended to. It uh, looks like Gallardo. Uh, well, and if you're Tony Poulos, I think that you, you you have to be pretty happy with that first half. I think the start was slow for Orlando City B, but they did come along in that, and when they had their chances, uh, they did their best with it. And so that will be all for Gallardo. As he will be helped to the bench and... Looks like his replacement will be Ben Polk, the 24-year-old forward from England and Syracuse University. At Gallardo, very impressive, the 19-year-old. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You don't want to see him leaving that game. You want to get him minutes and, and continue to play in an injury like that, and that could be a field turf injury. You get your feet stuck in this stuff you get your cleats stuck and there's just no give on a field turf pitch there's many more of the ball injuries on it, this type of surface than there is on natural grass and that's where you get a lot of uh, you know groin pulls you get a lot of uh, hamstring issues ACL MCL uh, playing on this sort of surface Farrell there's wall fall this boot won't connect with an offensive player, but they get it back. Garzi, Dover, chips it in front of the net, actually over the goal on the wrong side. Got away from Jordan just a little bit. Yeah, not a good cross by Dover whatsoever. And I wouldn't mind right now seeing Canardo Forbes maybe drop back a little bit more. I... It was a game earlier in the year that Wall Fall was suspended, and so it was Canardo Forbes that took up that sweeper position, and he did a fantastic job. The interplay between him and Darius Madison was really good, uh, and, you know, Forbes ended up, I believe, getting a goal in that game moving forward because he can do that, but maybe drop back a little more, help out, and, and, and build from the back. But there's a lot of space along the flanks right now for Rochester. Oh, great play by James. And the cross denied by Timbo. Uh, Ryan James, terrific effort to keep that in and get it to a teammate. And the flag goes up there as it looked like Ryan James was caught up the pitch a little bit too much there on the pass from Fall. In the 51st minute, Rochester has come up energized here the start of the second half. A lot of intensity, they don't wanna 
give up their home field advantage where they are undefeated on the season. 4-0-2. At midfield. OCB looking for Dequa, who nearly had goal number two for OCB. Ricocheted off the crossbar, and fortunately for the Rhinos, stayed out of the net. Yeah, this appears really to be the plan for OCB is to keep the Rochester Rhinos out wide and let them move the ball from left to right, but make sure you don't allow anything dangerous in the box. Wall fall, couldn't get there in time. Timbo was there. Dover. And here's Forbes. Good things begin with Canardo. And here they come. Garzi. That ball lifted high in the air. Garzi gets it back to Forbes. Forbes amongst three defenders. No worry for Canardo. DeFregger looks back to Forbes, and that one sent out of bounds by Timbo. Yeah, great work there by Canardo Forbes. A great movement with the ball. 1v1 attacking players, and in the end, earning the corner kick here for the Rhinos. 85% passing accuracy for Canardo. 18 chances created. And here comes the corner. To the far side, headed right to Edwards Jr. That was Wall Fall with that, getting on the end of that corner kick by Canardo Forbes. But unfortunately, as this one sent in, Wall Fall really is just standing still. And so he's not able to get any power behind that header. If he was two steps or three steps behind that and could have came into that ball and really drove it in, it would have been a little bit more difficult for Earl Edwards. So Edwards, who came in tied for second in the USL with 38 saves, makes a pretty routine one there. Here's a good look at Thompson. Scott Thompson played at the University of Virginia. Part of the 2014 College Cup championship team there at UVA. Against the double team, Forbes with the pick. Trying to send it to the far perimeter, but uh, there's Wall Fall. It's so smooth, Fall is. Moves effortlessly. Looks like the kind of athlete that would be good at any sport, Lee. And he probably was, <laughs> and probably is, just decided to go th this route instead and probably made the right choice. Forbes on the center of the field to Fregger to his left. Fall. And the cross deflected to Fregger shoots. And getting that ricocheted off of OCB defender. Couple of defenders down on the turf here. Yeah, and it's a corner kick, but you saw on that initial cross right here looking for handball is that does go off the arm of your many jewels before it's cleared up and out. But you could see the jewels had his arms at his side. He actually had his hands clasped behind his back. So that is ball to hand, not hand to ball. And that is why that is not called a penalty kick because his arms were tucked in and they were not in uh, a, uh, a position to stop a goal scoring opportunity. Forbes from the corner. And not a real threat in the area there for the Rhinos. They will retain possession and Dover will throw it in. Garzi looking to get open. Receives the pass. High point. Ryan Felix moves it to the far side. Beautiful move here by Forbes. Couldn't find a teammate. And they try to get it back to Canardo. And out of bounds to the Rhinos. OCB has been tough defensively. 
Yeah, they have. And, uh, you know, it's got to be a little bit frustrating right now for the Rochester Rhinos. They can't let that bother them too much because they're doing good things from the half to the top of the 18-yard box, just not being able to break through. They seem to be just that one pass or one shot away from getting the equalizer. Gomez well out of the goalie area to deny that attempt. You know, many jewels. One of the impressive youngsters for Coach Poulos. Joe Farrell with a head of steam down the middle of the field. Jordan Dover. And here's Fall as the Rhinos set up the atta their attack. James. Turgu, here's Forbes. The strike and off the backside of the defender, Scott Thompson. As Forbes really laid into that one, unfortunately for Canardo and Rochester, it hit off the tail of Thompson. Yeah, Forbes maybe just waiting a touch too long to take that shot. It gave Orlando City B enough time to be able to close that, that gap down, and that's why that one was deflected off. But still, another good scoring opportunity here of the corner. Can Rochester take advantage? And they take it short this time. Fall gets one away. Again, blocked at the def defense by, this time by Timbo. Well, the OCB possession up one to nothing. The USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's top talent and rising stars. Stay up to date with the latest league news and information by visiting www.uslsoccer.com and follow them on Twitter, at USL. Farrell heads it back to Tomas Gomez, the Mexican goalkeeper. School record at Georgetown, 36 shutouts. He played 2015 with the San Jose Earthquakes. Yeah, originally selected by the Columbus Crew in that 2015 MLS Super Draft, but never stayed with Columbus, going to San Jose instead. The Rhinos crowd getting into it, led by the Oak Street Brigade and Flower City Stampede. Nice crowd on hand. Uh, braving the uh, early rain. Drizzle kind of on and off. Uh, most of the umbrellas are put away right now here at Capelli Sports Stadium where the Rhinos are unbeaten. This season, 4-0-2, will it come to an end against OCB? It would be a bit of a surprise with uh, Orlando City dropping two straight here. And this is the third game, the tail end of their road trip. Well, Mike Garzi and Albert Dequa with a bit of a collision there. And Referees just warning, Chris Mur Charles Murphy right now just warning Dequa, and he had the elbows up, and that will be it next time. And that will be a yellow card. I'm surprised he didn't get the yellow card at this point in the match. Normally the, the talking to and the warnings are over that you normally see that card come out immediately. Did you like this uh, brand of officiating here? A good warning time. A nice, beautiful pass to Dover. The cross broken up again. Timbo is there. Darius uh, Madison upset. He was hoping to receive that ball and put it in the back of the net. Yeah, Mike Garzi was right there too at the top of the six yard box. And you saw him just have that hesitation. He thought that one was gonna get to him. Forbes always in the right speed as he changes speed so well. DeFreger on the attack. Gets it back to Canardo. Far side, Turgu. Touch pass, trying to get it to Darius Madison, and it's cleared out into the crowd. 
Oh, well, you know, they're getting those chances. They're getting the possession at the top of the box. And sooner or later, someone has got to try to get a clear-cut shot on goal. I think Rochester is trying to just string too many passes together. Orlando City B has uh, got four across the back. They're standing tall and able to deal with it. Well, looks like Darius Madison will depart for Coach Bob Lilly. And sprinting into the game is number 12, Johan Graf out of uh, Double Oak, Texas and Bradley University. Played three seasons in Sweden. Johan with two goals this season. So they're hoping Graf will uh, provide some magic and tie this game for the Rhinos. Another substitute for Coach Lilly into the game is uh, uh, Jalen Brown as he checks in for DeFreger. Uh, Jalen Brown out of Indianapolis and Xavier University. Second round pick out of the Super Draft in this season, 2017. So Jalen with an assist. A couple chances created. Here's Graf. Lead pass. Running in from the left. And the cross is hit too hard into the corner here, kept in. Wrestling match, Jordan Dover. But OCB able to, nearly able to clear it, but unable to. Here comes Turgu. Too Dover. much, yeah. too much footwork and just keeping it too long. They've got to be faster on that. They've got men in position. You saw Graf putting his arm up earlier, asking for that cross when he was in in movement so we could get something on that. You're, you're getting a ball back. You did a great job of winning possession back over Orlando City B, and then just sloppiness at the top of the box. Those decisions have to be made faster by Rochester Rhinos and to get the ball into those dangerous positions uh, because... Uh, they're waiting too long. Orlando City B is closing them down, doing a good job of defending. But the opportunities are there right now. Now Rochester stepped too slow. And Dequa, that shot sails well over the goal. I was just going to say before that, when the double substitution came in, that that's that's it. Bob Lilly said, you know what, we've, we've got to go for this one to try to get back into the game, make the double substitution. Uh, Madison, not very many touches tonight, so bringing in Graf and bringing in Brown to try to make a difference up front. Yeah, Jalen Brown, there he is, very quick feet. Farrell being harassed. Fall nearly lost it to the dangerous De Silva. Yeah, that's just, that's lackadaisical play there. You, you can't be making plays like that in your own zone like that and nobody back for you. Turgu, that will float right into the hands of Earl Edwards Jr. So an easy handle for the veteran goalkeeper. Yeah, so Turgu's come over now to the right-hand side uh, of your pitch, and Jalen Brown has gone over to that left-hand side after that substitution was made. Farrell heads it back in the direction of Gomez. Looks like the rain has started to fall once again here tonight in Rochester make conditions a little bit slick and that's why I think even more you need to get shots on goal in these wet and rainy conditions. Turgu leading the attack down the center. I think he thought Graf was going to cut to the right and uh, Graf went to up the middle and to the left. Veer to the left. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what he thought was going to happen. He thought that that diagonal run was going to be made by Graf, and that's where he placed the ball. And for some reason, Graf turned his back to the ball and went to the left instead and stopped that attack by Rochester from developing any further. Well, it's a good bet that Rochester will score a goal. They've scored one goal in each of the last six matches, and all by a different player and they've been unbeaten in that stretch. So if you rely on that statistically, uh, they'll probably tie this one up. Or you said it too early and it's the old broadcaster jinx. <laughs> that could be it as well. Yeah, that, 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 the Rhino fans are going to line yeah. up behind you yeah, on that one, Lee, and I apologize. <laughs> uh, Edwards will 
begin this. Fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune in to USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM FC channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check uslsoccer.com for dates and times. As they look at Timbo, they're trying to stretch a cramp out. See, if they got all these young kids. It's the old guys who are cramping here uh, later in the game. Timbo at uh, 27 will uh, head out of the game as uh, substitute will check in for OCB and Coach Poulos. Yeah, I think it's Jordan Schweitzer that's going to come into the match for for Timbo, and I like Jordan Schweitzer. He's a uh, you know another one of those up and coming products, and uh, I saw him uh, in Bradenton, Florida, uh, this summer or uh, sorry this spring in preseason. He got a lot of minutes at the IMG Academy, and he is a dynamic midfielder that really can play box to box. He's got some speed, he's good with the ball at his feet, and he's got a good shot too. So he can be as someone else that can, that can add to this lead for Orlando, but I, I like him as a player coming in uh, at this point in the game. Well, Schweitzer in, 23 years old, six foot, 165 pounds, out of the University of Denver. The battle at midfield, wall fall. Pokes it ahead to Forbes. Who collides at midfield with Schweitzer. I'm not sure if that were, I think the foul is going back further. It was before that pass because it looked like Schweitzer kind of gave up on it. Now Rochester has never beaten OCB. 1-0-2 all time in favor of Orlando City B. And the wall fall called on the foul there on De Silva. And the free kick opportunity here from a long ways out, but uh, each time this happens, it's just tick tock, tick tock as minutes and seconds go off the clock and everyone that does it favors Orlando City B looking to earn a full three points on the road. It is Rhino's Cares Night. $5 of each $15 premium ticket goes to support Rhino's Cares. And a big list of charities also helps underprivileged kids get to Rhino's games along with the military personnel and first responders. Opportunity here, Forbes to Graf. Johan Graf, terrific competitor, sent that in and denied as that one dove down, very nicely done by Johan Graf. Smart move there with uh, the quick throw in as they were already uh, catching Orlando City B with players trying to track back and that quick throw in and a quick cross into the box by Graf had to be dealt with by OCB defense. A nice play by Pierre De Silva, who doesn't play like an 18-year-old. He is very composed and uh, reliable force for OCB. Now with six assists on the season. Are we, we looking at a future star there in De Silva, Lee? What do you think? Oh, they're certainly keeping an eye on him, uh, the big club, and giving him lots of minutes uh, right now. 12 appearances, 11 starts out there. So he certainly is one of the players that, that they want to see out there and competing every uh, day for OCB. And when his opportunity comes, uh, maybe for him, he's hoping it's sooner than later uh, with the MLS franchise that he'll make the most of that opportunity. Now, just 18 years old and did become the first player in club history to climb from Development Academy to OCB to first team. And here's your man, Schweitzer. Jalen Brown with his quick feet, hoping to ignite an attack for the Rhinos as Brown had checked in here in the second half for Coach Lilly. And now in the 71st minute. The Rhinos moving it forward. Here's Brown. Jalen Brown 
four directing traffic comes to Dover. Into the corner of the box, Jalen Brown. Good passing and the lead to Turgu right there. Sends it in and what a save by Edwards Jr. What a save by Earl Edwards Jr. as Dover had a clear net. Well, that was the one shot they were waiting for. Beautiful ball into the box by Turgu. He cuts it across and there you see the diving Jordan gets his leg on it, but it's Earl Edwards Jr. with the fingertip over the crossbar. That is the save of the game so far. Another opportunity here, Garcy. And headed away by OCB. It's been one of those nights for Rochester trying to put it in the back of the net and we're approaching the uh, 73rd minute. Here's Graf as they continue to pressure that one sent into the stands uh, by Donovan. Now, now you see it appears that Rochester have turned it up just that one more gear, putting that pressure more and more on OCB. Will they be able to uh, absorb that pressure or, or is a goal coming right now at 20, just under 20 minutes? That's a lot of time to have to try to sit back and defend a one goal lead. Ryan James in the corner. And the flag went up. I yeah. thought that he came back from being in an offside position in time. Uh, but from our angle, the assistant referee thinks differently and the flag went up. And, and this is where OCB will just take their time. They were going to be very slow. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. And there you just saw Exactly what I just said, Charles Murphy telling him to speed it up, pointing at his watch, or the next time you're going to be booked for wasting time. <laughs> ben Polk pokes that into the corner. Orlando will substitute number 77. That's Austin Martz, 5'8", 160-pounder. Played at Georgetown, has an assist this season, played in the College Cup Final back in 2012 when Georgetown lost to uh, IU, Indiana University, in that College Cup. There's a good look at De Silva. Yeah, certainly one of the best players out there tonight for OCB. He didn't get the goal, but he certainly was the playmaker tonight in setting everything up. So uh, another assist for him, uh, tying the uh, league lead. Six assists on the season, did a lot of work up that left-hand flank and was rewarded with setting up a goal. So Coach Poulos keeping the fresh legs on the field. Austin Martz, wall fall. They tried to squeeze it into Forbes, but it was denied. Yeah, that ball just a little bit behind Canardo Forbes. In the air, Graf. And denied again by Seb Hines, always in the right spot. The savvy veteran from England. Yeah, that was just a good step up there as Graf looked to have a step on Hines and he gets down and just makes a great tackle. Battling Jalen Brown. Crowd. Hoping to have something to cheer about. They thought that this game was going to be tied. Uh, Turgu set up Dover beautifully. And Dover connected with the left foot with a sliding goal attempt. And he thought this was going to be tied. And out of nowhere, Edwards Jr. They got that hand up that deflected over the crossbar. Yeah, you have to bet that that is going to be up for USL save of the week, 100%, as those are game changers there. Yeah, Earl Edwards Jr., part of the week five USL team of the week. Uh, he may add this week to the accolades as well. Well, 
Rhinos. Joe Farrell, a very strong leg. Comes to the near side to Dover. Dover's cross deflected and alertly able to grab it as Edwards Jr. That's a confident move by Edwards Jr. coming off of his line and seeing that deflection was taking place and knew if he didn't get to it, it'd probably go for a corner kick, so no hesitation for him to come out and grab that one and keep possession in the hands of Orlando City B. Ryan James. Farrell. And there's Turgu. Turgu, very efficient passing, 83% accuracy. Forbes gets it back. Canardo searching for that open teammate. Wanted to hit Wall Fall on his run. And here's Fall. A nice sliding tackle. And break up by Connor Donovan. Well, that's what you need to see more happening is someone running through those channels to give someone Canardo Forbes when he's standing out on that flank. You have to give him options. So that's what you need is other players to get involved off the ball and start making space out there. Forbes cross and a header attempt. Uh, there by Ryan Felix who had his first goal career goal last week, a game winner against Ottawa, and then made the USL Team of the Week. Rhinos dominating possession time again here in the second half. They had 61% possession advantage in the first half. And unable to connect there. Yeah, Ryan James didn't think that that ball was going to go back behind the defender of OCB, so he cut back, and you could see him in frustration think, geez, if I would have kept going uh, down the pitch, that ball would have been sitting for me. And there's the flag comes in. Wall falls, shaken up, took a hit to the gut as uh, Schweitzer came up they got a piece and this is the sort of opportunity that Rochester have not been getting enough of this game is creating uh, making things happen as far as set pieces as you can see fall trying to walk off the Charlie horse there as he took a hard knock but these are the set piece opportunities that you want to set up you saw OCB in that first half maybe a little bit closer in but not too far off in the same scenario with a free kick to try to send some bodies forward, get that ball into the box. Yeah, beautiful kick, but knocked away. Schweitzer sent back in that in the air. Graf just couldn't put it in the back of the net. Yeah, and that one got deflected. You can see last second as Graf tried to get that ball on the frame of goal, and I believe it was Seb Hines that got in there and just deflected that one at the last second to keep it wide. Another look, it is Turgu with the ball in. It drops, and in fact, it is number 22. It is Connor Donovan with that block. And a sensational play by Donovan. Forbes from the corner, far side of the box, fall. Able to kick it out to a teammate. OCB is been tough to penetrate a terrific play from their defenders with Seb Hines, Connor Donovan Timbo Thompson they have been tough well 10 more minutes now plus stoppage time the question is they can can they continue with his onslaught from Rochester. And that's not gonna do it there, that's a long ball. That's where the frustration starts to set in. You can't just start getting away from what you've been doing. And the build up has been good by Rochester for this night. 
it's just been that you know, final third inside that box. They need to get some more bodies in there. And of course, Edwards Jr. with a fantastic save, a, a block here and there is stymied the Rhinos from getting on the board so far tonight. Uh, they can't OCB hold on. They're certainly not doing any much offensively in this half, that's for sure. They've been defending most of it. There's Graf. And broken up. Jules. Uh, another substitution for Coach Lilly into the game is Antonio Correa as he will replace Turgu. Now Correa had the lone goal versus Orlando back on June 7th. That game ended up in a tie. Uh, Coach Lilly hoping that uh, Correa has the answer uh, versus uh, OCB and Edwards Jr. Yeah, Correa just coming on now, and that's just, you know, get some more attacking uh, up top uh, for uh, the Rhinos. They're going to throw everything at Orlando City B now in the last uh, eight minutes in stoppage time. Jalen Brown shifts gears in a hurry. He has a quick step. The cross. And able to keep it in bounds is... Canardo Forbes sends it back out front and headed away again. Jalen Brown. Dover. Looking for that seam against the OCB defense. And it's difficult now. A lot of white shirts in that 18-yard area. And they squeeze it through to Graf. It was waiting for Jalen Brown, but it wasn't in position to strike it. And unable to hold it in bounds was Forbes. Well, they needed that just to relieve the pressure that Rochester was putting on here. Thompson taking his time. Terrific. Oh, I don't think that's ever a foul yeah, there. Farrell. I think he's made a good turn there and anticipated well. There was a little bit of contact, but I think it was Donovan coming forward more so than Farrell. Yeah, crowd unhappy with that one. And now OCB will take their time putting this back in play. Edwards drives it way downfield. An easy play for Gomez. Who outlet quickly to Ryan James. And here come the Rhinos. Nice move by Correa. James between two defenders now bodied off and there is the uh, whistle. And he's not happy with that one and now he's run in and he's made a meal of it. <laughs> Like, that's just ridiculous. That's embarrassing, I think, on him. He, he didn't like the initial call, and then he's run right back going to complain, and then he flops like that. That's ridiculous. And Garzi is being warned. And Mike Garzi tried to take the ball from Yomani Jules. So Yomani Jules is able to be very physical that first one. Then he takes just a little push, and uh, it's, you know, he's down for five minutes. <laughs> uh, a little bit of exaggeration there, but you know, you can't have it both ways there. So a free kick here, and again, I think it was the right initial call, and for the Jules to go back into that play, I, I, that's what caused it all. He, he didn't have to go and do that, uh, and he's fortunate he didn't get shown a card because of it, uh, even though he's the one that ended up on the ground. Yeah, good job by the officials not falling for that. Forbes puts it in and nearly sent it in. Jalen Brown darting in from the right side. Uh, the far post, that ball almost curled into the far post. Post Jalen Brown was in the vicinity. Yeah, that took a deflection. Watch this one. Well, we get the ISO there, and we're not going to see the deflection, but certainly that took one little bit of a hop, but then no one from Rochester there uh, sitting at the back post to be able to deflect that one in for the game-tying goal. So this one gets tighter and tighter now as Orlando City B would love to be able to go back uh, to the Sunshine State uh, with three points in their back pocket. And 
and come away with something on this road trip would be positive before their, their homestand. That would also push them into the top eight, and they're mm -hmm. coming into a three-game homestand. This would be a, a terrific energizer and uplift for this team heading home for the three-game homestand. A great way to finish a three-game road trip. A winning at Rochester hasn't been achieved by anyone this year. 4-0-2, the Rhinos. Eight match, USL unbeaten run by Rochester. On the verge of being broken by this OCB young squad. Uh, Rochester dominated time of possession in this one, and now just only a few minutes left. Plus stoppage to try to tie it up. Now the crowd still hollering it up. The Rhino faithful still trusting that their team can come up with the equalizer. OCB, and that uh, should be, yep, penalty from behind. Grabbed was Dequa by Dover. A yellow card for Jordan Dover. Yeah, Dover gets the uh, yellow card, but you can hear the fans on Rochester. They're upset because uh, the official got in, in the way uh, there of that one. That's Charles Murphy got in the way earlier, and that's what caused that counterattack opportunity by OCB, so left them uh, nothing else that they could do uh, but pull down Albert Dequa. So, and this is uh, just, this would put it away for Orlando City B, a perfect opportunity, a perfect p positioning here in that free kick to be able to uh, get it up and over the wall and down back on the frame of goal. Thomas Gomez has to be uh, positioned well here, has a wall in the right position, and we'll see if OCB can take advantage. Danny Deacon and the save by Tomas Gomez. Very nicely done by Gomez, the USL Golden Glove, lowest goals against average from 2016. Read that one nicely, Lee. Yeah. yeah. Schweitzer, I don't think, got everything that he wanted on that ball, but that was positioning from Thomas Gomez. And the crowd frustrated, hoping to see the tying goal. Again, another headed way in the box. OCB's been superb. Yeah, they've given a great effort here. They're throwing everything, bodies in front of it, making sure they're blocking. They're doing anything and everything they can defensively to, to come away with this win. A fantastic effort defensively. Uh, their fans really want their team to hold on tonight, and it would be a well-deserved victory on the defensive side of things for Orlando City if they can hold on here for the final minute and stoppage. Correa battling. Dover, a couple of bodies down, uh, tangled up at midfield. Now they're calling the free kick on... It's going the way of Rochester. It looked to me really like a 50-50 a collision. I think both players were uh, going for the ball. And the training staff has come out for Rochester, and that's just frustrating. Canardo Forbes, he's already up. Well, Ryan James will depart, as will Dequa. Dequa has been down on this turf numerous times here tonight. Continues to battle the 19-year-old who made six appearances with the Cameroon under-20 national team. No word on stoppage yet. Dequa will remain on the sidelines. Jalen Brown, Rochester. Looking for an opportunity here to tie it. Three minutes of stoppage. So about two and a half minutes for the Rhinos to tie this one. And good run there by Austin Martz. 
As that will take some time off the clock. And they're saying it's a throw. I thought it was going to be a throw for Rochester. That's why, again, more time is coming off the clock. Orlando City B taking their time. And rightly so, if you're them, you know, I'd be doing the exact same thing just to try to see this one out. Farrell trying to begin the attack, but they, oh, there's a retained possession with Brown. Quickly, Forbes. Brown, the cross attempt, bodied away and out of bounds by Thompson. A corner kick here, and again, this is uh, one of those chances that they've had a few of these opportunities, not been able to capitalize. Ken Canardo Forbes sent in that perfect ball into the box and see someone in green get on the end of it. Forbes, again, yeah. headed away. Yeah, not a great ball in by him. That's just too low to the near post, and that one's defended well by Orlando City. There's a nice long ball punched out of the box nicely by Edwards Jr. Uh, here's a sprint for the ball. Martz, look at this speed. Can he get a shot off? Instead, Martz will dribble into the corner and wind that clock down. Yeah, fantastic effort there. That was great to be able to knock 30 seconds off the clock. He just had more pace and more effort coming down that pitch. He knew he wasn't going to get a shot on goal, so he went right to the corner flag just to knock some more time off the clock. And flag, OCB. Flag stays down here. Yeah. Not making a pitch, pitch towards the goal. I'm not sure why Albert Dequa gave the ball right back there. He was upset that no one was coming up there, but yeah. just hold on to the ball. Could've held on to it, absolutely. Yeah, Edwards Jr. with Graf making a run towards him. And that should do it. Earl Edwards Jr. with a ball in his hands as we move over that three minutes of stoppage, but that should be it. Oh, Gomez trying to keep it in play as they continue the action. Could there be one last charge in the Rhinos here tonight? Well, you can see the whole bench up for Orlando City B. Where is that whistle? And there it finally, oh, no, it's still not. It was for an injury and a foul, but uh, this game is still not over as Orlando City B players are cramping up now. And that's gotta be frustrating for Anthony Poulos because this will just add more time onto the clock when their side thought that the whistle should have already been blown to end this match. And Jules helped to his feet with those tree trunk legs for the 18 year old. And he has used that to his side's advantage here tonight. Coming up big. Headed away again, Seb Hines has been Terrific, and that should do it. And that will end it here as OCB empties their bench to congratulate their teammates on the field. There is Earl Edwards Jr. with his fourth shutout of the season.